Welcome to the VC2 Multicast. Right now we're in the series, The Real Life. During this series, we'll be looking at different movies like Soul Surfer, Grace Unplugged, The Lego Movie, and Saving Mr. Banks, and we'll be discussing different biblical truths that can be found in them. So, without further ado, here's this week's message. Had a number of uh, occasions and things going on, and some threatened to bring me into depression. I tried one day to be depressed, Decided I was going to go ahead and just give in, you know, y'all get the chance to, why shouldn't I? And so I thought one day, I thought, you know, this, some of this stuff is pretty bad. I probably should be depressed over some of the stuff going on and some of the things I was fighting and some of the things coming at me. And I can only describe you, and I'm telling you this because, first of all, y'all know your pastor's honest with you, and I share real things. Yeah. Second of all, I want to give some of you hope, okay? I want to give you some hope. Because as the depression tried to overwhelm me, and I thought, yeah, this will be a good thing to do today. <laughs> you know, doggone it, I deserve a day. Oh, no. And I felt this hose. It was just like this huge hose hooked up to me. And I was like, what is this trying to keep me from being depressed? And immediately, a song I had written, My Hope is Anchored Beyond the Veil. And I looked and I thought, Dad, gummit, I ain't even going to be able to be depressed. Because I've got an anchor that goes beyond the veil. And the veil was man's attempt to hide God. Now you listen to me. Depression comes at you and it's an attempt to hide the goodness of God. Depression comes and it's an attempt for the enemy to hide God's goodness. And it's something for you to hide behind and say, see, God is not going to do what he promised. Nobody cares about you. Nobody. You're not, you're not being effective at all. Why don't you just give up? And all of a sudden, this pipeline of hope, and I start hearing the song I'd written. My hope is anchored beyond the veil. What is that coming back up in my... My hope... I'm, be, I'm trying to be depressed. Would you leave me alone? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Right. And then I realized this veil of this smoke screen, this thing the enemy's trying to do, I've got a pipeline that goes right through it. And although that's trying to feel real, there's something that goes right through it, and it's pumping hope inside of me. Amen. And I hear you are my hope. You are my strength. You are my help, mighty God. And all the songs about hope start rising up in me. Oh, oh let me just be honest with you. We, we try to push them down. That's just a song. No, it's a revelation from God that's bubbling up inside of you because of the words of the song that are saying to you, there is hope in God. Amen. We know David went through this in the Old Testament in the Psalms. David said, why are you so downcast, oh, my soul? That means his soul had already gotten to the position, position of oppression and depression. Yep. And he spoke to it and said, why are you so downcast on my soul? Put your hope in God. And most of us have looked at it like we've got to work to get our hope in God. But that's not what the Bible teaches under the new covenant. Amen. We have a hope that is anchored beyond the veil. Yes. Yep. Oh, I see, I see what you're trying to do to press me there. But let me see. Let me get something from that anchor that goes beyond the veil. An anchor secures you. Come on, somebody. An anchor yeah. secures you into what is truth. An anchor keeps you from going where you don't want to go. And that day, the anchor of my soul was, I am at rest. Yep. I am at peace. And my hope is in Jesus. Amen? Amen. I, I'm, I'm telling you this for those of you who are struggling with depression and oppression, and you're thinking, when will it ever end? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you don't give up, and you keep getting up, and you keep yeah. pressing on, God is going to do it. He promised, and you're going to be just like me. You're going to have about, you're going to have about five minutes of trying to be depressed and then going, well, I can't do it. I just can't. I used to be a champion depressor. I could drag you into my pit quick. I could talk, I mean, I'm good with words. I could talk to you about how bad it's going to be for you and me and all of us going to hell in a handbasket. But that's not the truth, is it? Yeah. And hope pumps life. I'm just yeah. being fueled. I, for a minute there, I kind of lost my oxygen. 
I could, couldn't breathe real well. But hope fueled me. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hope fueled me. And hope said, you ain't going down like this, sucker. Get up. Mm. Amen. Some of you feel like you've been on life support for months, years, yay, all your life. And I'm telling you, the life support you need is the, the hope that, that comes from beyond the veil. We have this hope that is an assurance that God is going to be as good as he has promised. We have this hope. Amen. Amen. Father, I want to pray that today every person in here who is struggling with depression, every person who's struggling with feeling like uh, you have forgotten where they live, every person who feels like you are against them, mm, my God. Father, would you just breathe hope and life and give them grace today to trust you more. Before we go on from anywhere right here, give them grace, Lord. Give us all grace to trust you more, that we would not give up. We know that you love us just the way we are and too much to leave us that way. And you are doing something in us and we want to stay uh, in the process, not giving up, knowing that this process rests on your shoulders, not ours. We say we trust you today, Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning. morning. Now that I've got that off my chest, I can talk to you. We're doing the last movie series today. The last movie we're looking at is Saving Mr. Banks. If you didn't get a chance to watch the movie, it is a a little bit of a heavier movie than the other ones that we've watched. And... uh, It honestly is not a movie that you really get it all in the first glance or just by casually watching it. In fact, I think I've seen it three or four times now and I see new things every time. It could be because I easily go to sleep in movies and so I don't (laughs) always see the end of the movie, but I have made it through, finally, all the way through the whole movie. Um, I want to talk for a minute about the story behind the movie, but I want to tell you up front that the, the idea that I want to look at today is that we have a father who never breaks his promise. Can somebody say amen? Amen. We have a father who never breaks his promise. He is a God who keeps covenant. He is a God who always keeps covenant. And I want to talk about the story behind Saving Mr. Banks. It was written by a lady who went by the name Pamela Travers. And Pamela Travers was a very broken woman, even more than the movie shows if you watch the movie, you see her as a, a, a somewhat of a bitter, mean woman. The movie, obviously, uh, as in good movie tradition, has made her nicer than she actually was. In fact, yeah, yeah. If you look at, I just did exactly what she did throughout the movie. I didn't even mean to. Um, there are actually pictures of the real tra- lady, and that's what she would sit there and do as she debated everything. She actually was a thorn in uh, Walt Disney's uh, behind. Um, For 20 years, he pursued her to get this movie right, to get the movie rights. Um, If you watch the movie, you see that she's a pretty harsh woman that that by the end, they soften up by showing her getting into one of the songs and even dancing at one point. And you see her in the movie theater when she finally watches the movie crying. All, uh, most of that is not true. The lady never enjoyed the movie. In fact, when she was crying, they did say, historians say she cried watching the movie, but she cried because she was very angry with the way they had made Mary Poppins. There was a, a, a lot of arguments and fights between um, uh, Pamela Travers. She went by P.L. Travers, I believe. Uh, they didn't even find out until at one point that it was not even her real name. Travers was her dad's name. And she was called that because of much hurt and pain that her dad had caused her. It is a very interesting concept, and psychologists could use this and have a field day with it, because she deeply loved her dad, though her dad had wounded her deeply. And I'm not turning this into a counseling session or even an emotional healing session, but I'm going to tell you there's a lot of darkness inside the movie connected to a fa- an earthly father's love and broken promises of an earthly father. Today, the kids are learning that there's a big difference between earthly fathers and heavenly father. Amen. That an earthly father will make a promise he can't keep. Yeah. But our God can't even lie. Amen. It's not that he doesn't lie. He can't lie. Yep. He can't lie. And if he makes a promise... 
He'll do whatever it takes to make it come to pass. Amen. Pamela Travers' unwillingness to deal with the hurt in her life left her with untold of, uh, amounts of fear and mistrust and bitterness and, and just plain out old meanness. You know, sometimes you meet people, you run to people, and they're mean. They're just mean. And you don't know the stories behind their meanness. You don't know the stories. Uh, that You don't know their life history. But I can almost bet you no one just wakes up mean. Right? right? But it's the stuff we go through, the life experiences, and especially the things not dealt with. You know, when you run into somebody happy and you think, well, they've had a good life. No, not necessarily. Maybe they just dealt with the bad stuff. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Because your present situation and the way people see you, it doesn't necessarily reflect what the past was. Right. It reflects someone who's learned to deal with the stuff. Yeah. And she didn't deal with it, and she was very angry and very bitter. In fact, if you go and read the, the real story of Pamela Travis, I, I, I won't even say out loud the stuff this lady did in her life. It, it, it is beyond. I promise you, the movie made her look good by the end. It is not so. I, why do you say that, Pastor? Because I want to bring this out. Because the movie had to leave us feeling happy. If they had shown us what that lady really did, we'd all, we'd all want to go burn Mary Poppins, though you might not even watch the movie anyway, but you'd hate everything about it. And so they had to make it happy. Like some of us have to lie about our lives to make other people think that everything's okay and not be honest about what really is going on. Yeah. Right? Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. But see, if you deal with it, then you don't have to do that. Come on. Amen. There was so much brokenness in her. The movie projects that she softened some, but the true life is, in true life it was much uglier. She was broken, I, I suppose, no one can know for sure, because of her dad and his alcoholism and possibly the promise that he broke to her. He made a promise. He says to her, I'll always be with you. And that's the promise that an earthly father cannot make. And then he dies very young. He dies very young, 43. I'm way past that. And there's only one father who has promised he would never leave us and forsake us. And that is our Father God. And He's the only one that can keep that promise. It was a promise He simply couldn't keep. And, and after that, her life was a series of mess, hurt, and brokenness. She wanted the movie Mary Poppins to relay just how cruel and harsh the world really was. In her eyes. And how she saw the harshness of it. At one point, uh, they're talking about it. And someone says something about Mary Poppins coming to save the kids. And spoiler alert, she says, you think Mary Poppins came to save the kids? She didn't come to save the children. She came to save Mr. Banks, the father. And, and we see somebody crying out, I wanted my daddy to be different. You see an old lady bitter because of things that had happened to her. Walt Disney wanted to paint a world of whimsy and magical things, as all of his stuff does. And, and, and let me first apologize to those of you that believe, if anybody in here does this, I know there are some people that do believe everything related to Disney is burped out of the pit of hell. I'm sorry if you believe that, um, that you have that right to believe that, but uh, I, I don't think that Walt Disney himself was burping ideas out of the pit of hell, so Amen. just so you know. Um, I don't think anything that we see that has changed today started out where it originally did, including the church. So, But I digress. Walt Disney wanted to make it whimsical, and uh, Pamela Travers did not. She wanted it to be as dark as she saw life to be. She wanted the harsh, cruel realities uh, to be the main theme. She wanted Mary Poppins to be more like her. And Walt Disney wanted it to be more like him. He wanted, the, in fact, at one point she says, you're going to make her twinkly. Because we all know life's not twinkly. Life is dark and depressing. That's what she thought. Many of us probably have had harsh things happen in our lives that created in us a jadedness and a harshness and a, a feeling that we can't trust others. 
You may be filled this morning with bitterness, but I want to tell you God can change that. Amen. Here's the point I'm trying to make about the movie. We must deal with our brokenness or it will affect all of those around us. There are two quotes from the movie. Two quotes from the movie I want to focus on that, that uh, Walt Disney says. He, he, he speaks of fathers having integrity and fathers being reliable. And he says this, a man cannot break a promise to his kids no matter how long it takes. Now, this is just Walt Disney. A man cannot break a promise to his kids no matter how long it takes. It was over 20 years before the movie finally was produced from the time his daughters. See, Walt Disney had promised his daughters because they read the books by T.L. Travis. They read the books on Mary Poppins, whole series of books. And they said, Daddy, we want this into a movie. And so Walt Disney promised his daughters. I don't know if they talked that way. It just was funner to do that. Walt Disney promised his daughters, and he said the second thing, I have not broken on a promise to my two daughters, two daughters, because that's what daddies do. I have not broken on a promise to my two daughters, because that's what daddies do. And even though his daughters were grown 20 years later after they had asked, he still made sure that he kept his promise. I want to look at four scriptures, please. I want to look at four scriptures that speak of our Heavenly Father and what the Word says about Him. Three of them from the New Covenant, one from the Old. Luke eleven thirteen. 13. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. We know how to give good gifts, right? Yep. I don't think there's a father in here that won't want to give an evil gift to their kids. Even when you're mad at your worst day. When you're maddest at your kid. Kid will look at you and say, Dad, you give good gifts. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? I I think he's uh, uh, equating Holy Spirit as a good gift from our Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. Deuteronomy 7, 9. The Lord your God is God, the faithful God. Somebody say faithful God. He's a faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love Him and keep His commandments. He is a God who keeps covenant. Uh, Hebrews 6, 17 through 19. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise, the heirs of the promise, us, the unchangeable character of His purpose, the unchangeable, listen to this language, the unchangeable character of His purpose, what He has purposed has never changed. That's just his character. When he promises something, it's going to happen. He guaranteed it with an oath so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Say that line with me. It is impossible for God to lie. Say it one more time out loud. It is impossible for God to lie. We who have fled for refuge, that's me, might have strong encouragement. Not just a little encouragement, but strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. What was I telling you about? A hope that enters into the inner place or the secret place behind the curtain. Titus 1-2. God who never lies. Titus 1-2 calls him the God who who never lies. Now remember, hope is the assurance of Father's goodness. Our hope is the assurance of Father's goodness. Some of you may have been raised by a father who wasn't good, who didn't express goodness, and maybe there were days, especially if he struggled with some kind of emotional thing, and there were days when he might be nice, and maybe you approached an alcoholic father especially as, is it safe or is it not? And we bring those things into our understanding of Father God. But I'm here to tell you that our Father God is always good, and He cannot lie. What He promises, He will do. And He's always approachable. He has invited us into His presence. He desires His people. That's what the whole thing of the cross was about. He said from times old, I will be their God and they will be my people and I will dwell with them. And now under the understanding of the new covenant, we realize, know ye not, that you are the temple of Of the Holy Spirit. That not only did God desire to come down, but He desired to come down and be in us. 
that he tabernacles with us. If you're looking for the house of God, look no further. You are it. Amen. You're looking for the dwelling place. I'm seeking God. Here you go. He's living inside of you. Desiring communion with you. You can rest in his promise. This is our hope that God is always good. He says we have this hope that goes beyond the veil. And that is God is always good. That no matter what I'm going through, God is good. That's why Paul could say to those who love him and are called according to his purpose, all things work together for good. That's why I say if it ain't good, it ain't over. God's still working it out. The Lord has promised good to us and he does not lie. The Lord has promised good to us. Man, you're going through situations and you don't see a way out. You don't understand how you're going to get through it. You're going through situations and you don't have the answer yet. I'm telling you, the thing you can rely on is that the Lord has promised good to us and He does not lie. I believe the problem is many of us don't know what God has promised. The reason we will sign for a package That doesn't belong to us. Pastor, what do you mean by sign for a package? I'm glad you asked. The enemy knocks on the door and says, I'm going to give you cancer. Well, I did hear a pastor once say that God will put cancer on you to teach you a lesson. So I'll receive this gift as from the loving Father. See, some of us think that way because we were told that. I mean, I bet you've all sat at funerals like I have where the, the, the... Where the person standing there officiating that funeral said something like, well, cancer was a lovely gift that the Lord saw fit to take this saint home with. And I sit there and I think, if I were a lost person there, I would simply think, I don't want to serve your God. If your God uses cancer to kill people, I'll take my chances out there. And I'll booze it up until time to go. Y'all ain't talking real to me. I sit there and I listen to that stuff and I think, my God, I I literally, oh, Father, help me. I want to ride this surfboard. (laughs) I was sitting at a funeral, sitting at a funeral with my mom, and the pastor said, what a precious gift of cancer escorted this lady into the arms of a loving father. My mom grabbed my knee and squeezed it. She said, don't you say a thing. Don't you say a thing. Don't you embarrass me. I said, but mama, he's talking about my God. He's talking about the lover of my soul. He's talking about the one who set me free. He's talking about the one who's never given up on me. He's talking about my good, good father. That's who he is. And he's telling lies. I don't know about y'all, but if I hear somebody telling lies on you, I'm be standing in Walmart and hear somebody say something about you. I'm like, whoa, ho, ho. What'd you just say? I don't know them like that. That's right. You, you're telling somebody ain't even true. You're telling a bus-sided tale. I don't know what that means. Those of you tuning in by internet, I don't know what it means, but my grandmother always said it. A bus-sided tale. I've actually looked it up and can't find it. But I'm pretty sure it's a non-truth. And I'm telling you, I'm not encouraging that we be rude, but I am saying, church, that it's time that we stand up and be honest about who our God Amen. is. Amen. You know, somebody said, well, how did you get cancer? Probably, probably it was the foods that I ate, you know, if that happens. Come on. Yeah. It was probably not living healthy. Maybe it was all those chemicals that I poured in my garden, and it says, use mask and use gloves. And I'm like, who cares? <laughs> Come on, church, let me say it again. You can't shoot yourself in the foot and then say God is a mean God. Hello? If I shoot myself in the foot, God had nothing to... He could have stopped the bullet. You could have too. And why do we have this insatiable need to blame everything on somebody? And if you really need to find a need to blame any sickness or disease or hurt or pain or suffering, go back to the garden 
where sin entered. That's where it came. And if you want to go to where it was resolved, go to the cross. Where the rule and sin, the rule of sin and shame and death, all of that, all of it ended right there at the cross. Amen. And if I want to do anything, if I want to understand anything, it's the power of the resurrection that is living inside of me, helping me overcome all of that. Amen. Amen. I believe the problem is many times I have not known in my life what the promises of God are. And so I would sign for packages that didn't belong in my house. Yep. See, last week when depression came and said, uh, I've got a package for you. And I said, well, you know what? I hadn't signed for one of these in a long time. But I could get some good party favors to go with this. Maybe go buy a bottle of something or a pack of something. Oh, oh. Just have a day of wallowing in this thing. Oh, oh. Getting my pen ready to sign for it. And something says, that package ain't got your address on it. Yep. Amen. Yep. Right. And see, because I know my covenant rights, I'm able to say, that's not mine. That's not mine. You got the wrong house. One, one of my counselors years ago when I was getting over rejection taught me this little thing. He said, you just need to start saying every time rejection tries to come, just say this. That ship is not going to dock in my harbor. Yep. <laughs> and I would just picture when, when, somebody would, when I would feel rejection from somebody, I'd say, oh, that ship's not going to dock in my harbor. I'm, I, I got a clear, sweet harbor full of promises of God. And there ain't a slot open for you. Amen. It was just a colorful thing that helped my imagination. Amen. So I think that it's, it's necessary that we understand the promises of God so that we can bring ourselves into remembrance of the promises of God. On your way out today, you're going to get a sheet like this. It says, promises of God. It's front and back. It's not by any means all of the promises of God. By any means, this book is full of the promises of God. But it's some that I believe will be a help to you, will be a help to us. And I want to, if you'll give me another five minutes, I want to shotgun through these promises and scriptures. I want to read these to you. I invite you, if it's one that you need, that you somehow agree with it. Maybe an amen or an oh God or Lord help me a shout, a head nod, a fist bump, something, somehow respond to it. I want to invite you to respond when I read out one or say one that you know is real and you are living it. And you can respond even louder to one you need to be aware of in your life. But, but and I, you know, I wish I could do this like T.D. Jakes, or, you know, and just have everybody shouting on their feet when they get done. I have no hopes of that, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> I dream of doing stuff like that, but you know, I am just me. But, but, let me, but let me tell you this. It doesn't matter how much. Mm, my God, y'all listen to me. Father, help you. Thank you, Jesus. It doesn't matter how much I could work you up into a frenzy in here today. I could have y'all on your feet jumping over the pew, screaming and shouting and shaking and waving hankies and screaming. I could have you doing all that if I worked hard enough. But it yeah. won't help one iota That's right. if this week you don't call on these promises. Yeah. If you don't bring yourself into remembrance. If you don't remind your enemy. If you don't take the stuff and declare, mm -mm, that's not, mm -mm, you're not doing that to me anymore. What has God promised us? He promised to never leave us. He will be with us until the end. Yeah. 
Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Matthew 28, 20. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. He is with us through the struggle. He is with us through the trial. He is with us through the, the, the battles. He is with us through the good, the bad, the ugly. He does not leave us. He promised He would forget our sins and our lawless deeds. Hebrews 8, 12. For I will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. If someone is reminding you of your sins, it may be your heart condemning you or your enemy condemning you, but it is not your God because He has forgotten your sins and your lawless deeds. He promised He would heal all our diseases. He promised. He promised he would heal all our diseases. Amen. Psalm 103, 2-3. Yeah. through three. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Amen. 1 Peter 2, 24. He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Yeah. By His wounds... You have been healed. Everybody, everybody sick in your body today declares to me, by his wounds, I have been healed. By his wounds, I have been healed. He promised he would send us a comforter, a counselor, a helper. John 14, 16, 26. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever Amen. but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that i have said to you john 16 13 when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come Amen. he promised that He would complete the work that He started in us. Philippians 1.6 And I am sure of this, that He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. If you are still a work in progress, praise God. Amen. He has promised He will complete it. He will complete it. He will complete it. He promised us sufficient grace, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. It is more than enough, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses that by the power of Christ, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He promised us victory over death. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But Thanks be to God who gives the victory, us the victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death holds no victory for the child of God. Yep. Death yeah. we, we cannot die. Yeah. We cannot die. Yep. We are everlasting spiritual beings. Oh, this tent might waste away, but I'll be more, and alive, more alive than ever on that day. Amen. Oh, you might not see me, but I'll be more alive, more aware, in a new body. Everything will be different. Amen. And you'll be saying, oh, he died. No, he didn't. He can't die. Right. I ain't preaching. I'm reading. Promise freedom from sin. Somebody say amen. 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 Freedom from sin. God, thank you that you promised. You promised freedom from sin. I'm going to read this and I'm going to tell you some of us, listen, you are struggling with sin. You want to be free of it. You are fighting. You, it's, some of you are not even struggling anymore. I understand you gave up the struggle because you just think it's over and I'm just going to have to live with it. But that's not what God promised us. That's not what the new covenant is about. Don't give up. I don't care how much you're still messing up. Don't give up. I don't care how much you're screwing up. Don't give up. And don't give up on God's ability to change you. I don't care if you give up on your ability to do anything right. Fine. You may be almost there. 
if you give up on your ability to get it right, but don't give up on God who promised. Romans 16, 17 through 18, but thanks be to God, though you were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Amen. Some of you need to start saying to that thing that has you enslaved, I'm a slave of righteousness. Your days are numbered. I'm a slave of righteousness. You don't rule me. I don't care who around you says it. looks like you're being ruled by that thing. Oh, that's just a lie. Because I'm, I'm, I'm righteous. And my heart is getting in connection and line. It's being changed. And yesterday I didn't do this thing. I don't know about tomorrow. And right now I'm finna quit doing this thing because you brought it to my attention. I'm a slave to righteousness. That means I have to obey righteousness. What's the righteous thing to do here? Yeah, I messed up. Excuse me, I got to get up. I got to be that. I'm not that. Amen. Mm, my God in heaven. My God in heaven. I'm slave to righteousness. Somebody say I'm a slave to righteousness. I'm a slave of righteousness. I have to obey its dictates and demands. I just, it's just natural. It happens. I got to obey righteousness. Righteousness flows out of me. It's just who I am. God is creating that in me. I will not give up. Amen. Amen. Eternal life with him forever. That's what he's promised. Amen. John 3, 16, 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish. Oh, oh you thought I was going to perish because of that struggle. Wrong. I will not perish. I have been promised everlasting life. Come on, somebody. That's what he's promised me. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world. He didn't even come to condemn me. But so that through him... I might be saved. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 Then we who are alive, who are left, who are perfect, no, just alive and left, will be called up together with Him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. We have a good Father. He does not lie, and we can trust Him. Can somebody say amen? amen? You have a good Father. Who does not lie. And these things that he has promised, he will do. I want you to take these sheets. I want you not to just to, to throw them away. Don't leave them laying in your seat. Don't leave them or wherever you get them. Don't leave them in your car. Take them and put them somewhere so you'll see them. I'm asking you. I'm, I'm begging you. Take them and put them somewhere. Read over this. It won't take you a few seconds tomorrow morning to read over this. Read over this and, 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 and remind yourself and declare over yourself, this is who I am. He's a good, good father. That's who he is. And I'm loved by him. That's just who I am. And here's what he's promised. I don't care if you feel like you're lying. So what? It's the truth. This is the truth. The Amen. devil is the lie. This is the truth. Your depression is lying to you. This is the truth. Your sin and shame is lying to you. This is the truth. He's died to bring us into all that he has for us. And here's what I want you to get. Listen to me. It's not that God doesn't lie. God cannot lie. I'm going to say it again. It's not just that he doesn't lie. He cannot lie. What he has spoken, he will do. Thank you for joining us for this week's message. If you'd like to find out more about VC2, you can find us online on Facebook, on Twitter, or on our website, vc2online.com. And we would love to hear from you. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and leave a comment. We'd love to find out who you are. And if you're watching this via YouTube or iTunes, go ahead and click the subscribe button. More subscribers means we have greater online visibility, which means that we can get the message of Jesus out to more people. So go ahead, click that subscribe button.